man. Oh, man. Good evening, everybody. This is the first Professor Krebs stream in a dang long time. My gosh, so much has happened. So much has gone on, mostly in the form of I, I'm still Professor Krebs in my heart. I'm no longer officially a professor. I stopped teaching at the college that I've been at for like nine years, picked up a new gig out in software development. And uh, I, in that process of trying to like transition through all that stuff, you know what streaming just fell by the wayside. On top of that COVID happened. I was teaching online for a long time. There was a lot going on that made it so that streaming was not tenable. And to be honest with you, it's still really difficult for me to find time where I can stream. In the future, I probably won't do as many live streams, but I might do some pre-recorded material and then release it as premieres and things like that. Oh my gosh, it's the Riles in the chat. Dude, Riles, it is so good to have you on, man. Thank you so much for being here. And if you guys do not recall, Riles is our resident moderator. He is super awesome at doing this, especially because he has a great... Uh, talent for keeping an eye on the chat, and I am proficient at ignoring everything. It might be <laughs> might be time to move to YouTube. You know, not wrong. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't. I, I still want to release things on Twitch, but of course, whenever I'm done with Twitch, of course, I post on YouTube. But yeah, it might be time to put some pre-recorded or just edited content there. But I love, I love the live interaction. I love the live interaction. And I, if I get that opportunity, I want to have that with you. So a lot's gone on. Uh, good news, good news. In all of that pandemic nonsense, I did score a PS5 on launch day, actually. And I've had it. Uh, so I've had it the whole time. I've been really happy with it in general. I will admit that, like, the flow of games right now is low, but that's normal. That's normal. Look at the history of consoles. I realize this because of the pandemic and the fact that the console is new. I think we're seeing uh, a drought of new titles more so than what we've seen in times past. But if you take the nominal flow of new titles and new IPs and you, you look at how that occurs at the start of the life cycle of a console, and then you add to it the restrictions of COVID and the pandemic, you'll notice that like really... This isn't abnormal. This isn't out of the realm of, of normalcy, right? And today, Returnal dropped. Now, right now, you'll notice on the screen, Returnal is updating, but I can start without the update. I just wanted to chat with you first because I didn't want you to miss any of the content, even just like the startup screen and things like that. So real quick, real quick, I'm going to check with my moderator, Riles. Uh, you know, I, I can see all my little meters. I can see that all the sound is going, but I want to just double check because... I'm paranoid like that. So, Riles, how's the audio so far? He'll get better. he'll hit me up here in the chat in just a second. But I I think my microphone is solid and everything is great for right now. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, guys. Let's do this. I've I have been excited for this game since they announced it. This looks insanely creative. And so far, the reviews that have come in have been extremely strong. Now, I don't know what it looks like on your side, but on my side, that is absolutely at least 60 frames a second. Might need to, Riles. Not sure. Having your audio commentary would be awesome. I just have to capture the Discord audio. Should we take a moment and do that so that you can comment on this as well? Yep, I like that idea a lot. You know, if you folks will give me just a moment, let me set up the audio for Discord in uh, Streamlabs just really quick here. And we'll go from there. Let's do audio output capture. Actually, I think I can get away with just... Hmm. I think that's no, just desktop audio anyway. But that's okay. That'll work. Um, can I select an exact source? We're about to find out. Hmm. 
No. Not that way anyway. But I might be able to... Let's figure it out. First, I'm going to jump into uh, audio chat with my buddy, Ryo. As soon as I figure out what I did with my... I had little headphones. I had little earbuds. And now I do not... Oh, here they are. Yeah, it's been a minute. So I am definitely... Oh, by the way, you know, in, uh, in leaving my previous job, I had to turn on all my work hardware. And of course, that laptop was what I was using for streaming and things of that nature had to buy my own thing went with a lenovo legion so that i could still have lenovo hardware pretty reasonable nvidia graphics card and all that let's see yeah yeah first of all uh aso the kuruta very happy to have you on the show been here before but thanks <laughs> What is going on, man? It has been a long, long time. Uh, yes, I okay, Isaiah. Absolutely, I remember you, buddy. Yeah, and yeah, I, I left Newmont March of this year. Uh, it was it was time for me to get back into industry and to learn things again and to and to grow in that way. Chances are, I don't know, five years, ten years down the road, I'll probably go back to teaching at some point. But I got to be honest with you, I am loving being back in industry. Plus I landed at a super sweet company. So I'm really, really stoked. Hey, Tizacopia, how you doing? Glad to have you here. All right, cool. Uh, enough with the hellos for right now, but uh, let's get this discord flowing real fast. Uh, Riles, let's just do that. And of course I have no real audio right now. Give me one second. Yikes. I think it's because... No, no. That's where it should be going. How interesting. Oh, you know what? I bet you it's the output settings on Discord itself. Give me a sec. Mayhaps. Uh, or... Riles, talk to me, buddy. Yo. Hey, there you is. I love it. I love it. Um, but that is not going to be my desktop audio, so I've got to fix that real quick. Yeah, I'll have to switch this around. Hang tight. Guys, I'm sorry for the delay of game, but don't worry. We're going to get this fixed real fast. We'll be good to go. Let's go to this thing. Input. No, bra. Uh, that one. And output that one. Give me a high sign, Riles. There you are. No, I hear you. <laughs> no one likes that. Not one person likes that. Talk for me. Only always, right? You know, what's funny is that it's not coming through my desktop audio at all. Um, so I don't think it's actually being captured and passed through. Um, but I really want your commentary on this. You know, one thing we could do if you were down is that we could basically have a chat party on PlayStation and that would get captured. Awesome, awesome. Uh, let's use that as a backup, but really fast. Let me see if, if I if I could just find one more, one more thing here. I got to try it. Yeah. Um, do me a favor. Talk again. Mm. Nope, nothing's coming through. Oh, they can hear you. Okay, so can you guys hear Riles? Because the meters on my side are completely dead for Discord. Can you guys hear Riles then at home? Was it? Well, we'll know here in a moment. Oh, dang it. Um, yeah, give me a sec. Let's do that. 
and we'll just go back to default device. Uh, device, what device? Because <laughs> that is a quote. Yeah, soft emo says, in fact, could here, just not now. There it is. Actually, you know what? Now my meters are live, and it actually, yep. it says you're. Don't take this. Oh, the, yep. Take this the there right way. There it is. Now it says I hear me high. again. Yeah. I'm going to turn your volume down just a little bit. Talk for me again just to make sure we got good levels. Yep. There uh, we are. Hey, chat. How's it going? Awesome. Guys, thank you very much in the chat for the feedback. That's fantastic. I really appreciate that. You're helping me out here. You're helping us both out. Thank you for being team players. Christian. Dad? <laughs> Christian, son? get out of the chat. You don't belong here. You can't even show up to D&D &D on time. This is not a place for children. <laughs> All right. So, here we go. All right, y'all. If you guys are good, I'm good. And, uh, oh, I just hit X on everything. I was just trying to change. Oh, whatever. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, how aliens does this feel right now? Uh, so at this point in time, it's, you know, nice shot on a starry sky. The video quality actually looks phenomenal at this point. A lot of reviews uh, have said that this game is the first is the first title that actually feels like a PS5 game. And I totally understand what they mean, especially like in terms of unique and original IP. So that is something that was interesting. So as you were uh, going right through the asteroid field there, from the distance, you could tell that they were heavily animated, but as they got closer, the detail on them was just phenomenal. I noticed that on my side too, of all funny things. In fact, right now on this cutscene, it doesn't, it, it definitely feels like 30 frames or even like 29 frames going, you know, cinescope kind of. The force feedback, the, the what, what am I trying to say? The haptic feedback in the controller, the vibrations and everything. We have a thumbs up from Triz, which was, or Tiz, which was a little bit ago, and uh, Soft Demo says they miss you tons. Hey, you know what? I miss, you know what? I miss everybody at Newmont. I love what I'm doing now. I'm very happy, but I was happy at Newmont too. I miss the crap out of you guys. I love you guys. You know that. I hope you know that. The first thing that a lot of people notice, I definitely noticed, uh, in, the, in the trailer when this came out, when the trailer dropped for this, is the heterochromia of her eyes. And there's part of me that wonders if Secret that is an element of storytelling. Because it's a very specific and deliberate thing to show, especially a character, look those close ups too, right? Especially a character who is covered head to toe, but you can see their face. To put a detail like that in the face feels so deliberate that I expect the storytellers not to waste. Yeah, <laughs> so, with you know. that, with that, just, just my like, yeah, uh, there the uh -huh. That's just, it's actually wonderful. It really is. good animation on the crash landing too game audio is a bit loud i can i can kick that down is it yeah since joining the call i've got nothing on audio so thanks for the shout outs chat you're doing great okay now they've switched to a 60 fps on my side atropos Oh, I wonder if you guys can hear this, but I'll put it close to my mic. There's my controller just like doing all sorts. Oh, network error. Oh, come on. That's okay. Uh -oh. That's okay. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it. As long as the stream is still up, we're good. The stream is, in fact, still going strong. So, uh, pretty standard controls. Left for move, R for look. Uh, up is up, down is down. L3 for sprinting. And also, when you jump, there are jets on her back there you go a little extra proportion yeah uh square doesn't do anything yet triangle uh circle is evade and it looks like there is some interference on her equipment so that you can't evade over and over again yeah i'm just mashing the button okay good so there is a delay there i bet you and the thing is knowing okay i have avoided all um review videos and all that stuff i wanted to come into this as blind as i could to, you know short of the trailers and i suspect 
that oh my gosh look at this detail look you can actually see back into the ship you'll see this in a second on the stream rails you can see back into this i can actually see like the the console there's some just amazing through yeah oh the animation on the sparking of the frayed cables is phenomenal there yeah it is i don't know anything That's about this really game good. so i'm suspecting that the things that we're seeing right now with like her evade the interference Welcome, on her system hi may jamie hi may not 100%. I'm going to assume Oh, hi, May. <laughs> or no, I, Jamie? <laughs> I can't uh, be too sure, but I'm going to assume hi, May. Not online only. That's right. You can actually play this game and not be connected to the network. Um, this is true. And of course, they haven't given me much in my immediate surroundings, but I want to explore a little bit and just see what's going on. I suspect that there will be action RPG elements where we can get double jump or triple jump, or we can get like rapid evade. The, um, yeah, I, su I suspect there will probably be some uh, pretty nifty upgrades you can pick up along the way. And as this is uh, not a stream for children, please don't mind when I say, I just found a Walgina. Anyway. You gonna stick your hand in it? No, no, mm, no. Mm, mm -mm. <laughs> Warning, Helios, abandon. I'm sure the teeth won't bite. Dude, can we just, for a moment, can we get the voice actor for Isaac from The Division? and have him be the computer for this game. Can he just oh, be the computer be for like every game? What's going on about it? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, feet Dylan in the background. Uh, I mean, to be fair, if you program your Alexa correctly, you could have that always be the case. Uh, that is not incorrect. I, I am down with that. Also, there is a hidden Alexa talent. Uh, never mind. where um, I have an echo in my room and I said her name. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, but there is a hidden talent where if you say activate SHD network, network or division network, then yeah, uh, it I think sounds. I uh, told you about that. I think I, you did, and it, it is freaking awesome. I'm also a sucker for like a really good voice acting and like radio drama type stuff, and the and the the things they did audio wise in that sort of interactive story of sorts is the phenomenal. Little interactive audio logs. So. Yeah. The, it's it is not wasted i in fact, i would say it's wasted only in that like no one knows about it no one indulges in it it's great if you like the division even a little bit and you have an echo device check that out well look at this i found something i found obelite powers xenotech device see and that just sounds like something isaac would pull in division i know right you know? Obelite discovered. Um, oh, that's a nice dead body. But is it delicious? Checking identification on a helmet. Also, I'm just saying you do technically have a little uh, BD around your neck, like from Star Wars, and that's pretty great. Yeah, right. He just won't, you know, lead you to the next objective. That is the cleanest nerf gun I've ever seen. Right? You'd think after a horrific crash landing and a battle, it might be a little dirty, but not pristine. Yeah, pristine. And uh, I have a friend who is a rather famous props maker in Hollywood. Uh, in fact, he has his own channel. I'm going to give him a shout out, even though he, he doesn't know I... I, I intend to do that, but uh, Evil Ted Smith. Oh boy, the gang's all here. Uh oh, who's here? Who's here? Uh, oh, yeah, it's boy, my it Ash! <gasps> oh my gosh, Ash! Can I just say how thrilled I am that you are here? Like, I can I can hear you smiling on the other end of the stream. I just want you to know that. <laughs> uh, Eli is also here. Eli, what's up, Elijah? I'm just going to start singing to everybody who comes in here. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, uh, blah, 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 Evil Ted Smith. Evil Ted Smith, brilliant prop maker. You have seen many of his creations. He was uh, the guy behind the Tracker Jacker nests in The Hunger Games. He was behind the minigun in Wrath of in uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. Um, let's see. Hold to skin. Undiscovered item. All right, no, so no, no, let's do it. No, no, no. Softy Mo, we covered this. This is not a children's history. You can be a part of the family, but you can't be a kid. Silphium. 
Repairs moderate damage to integrity. But what about to honor or just straight morale? Um, oh, no, no, no. With honor, there's vengeance. With honor, there's vengeance. Press the touchpad to access your suit computer and surf the net. Maybe check your mail. You know, make sure that you post lots of pictures on Insta. Um, all right, so we have a three dimension. This map is great. Look at that. Wait, wait. What do you mean? Do you. Okay, remember where I found the wall, Gina? Uh, there yeah. is a mark on the map. Uh, there's a mark on the map right about that same location. So I, it makes me wonder if we're going to go back you know, there. Just, significantly off in the distance. But that might be like some fast travel thing for later. It very well could be. It's obviously not active now. Um, we also have the data bank. Can I just say how 80s that terminology is? Like, I remember when that was like, that was always. You, don't, you didn't hear database. You didn't hear data warehouse. It was always data bank. Um, that is like soups 80s. And I kind of dig that. It's very much a throwback to like sci-fi novella history. Oh, Christian makes a good point. That might just be like a respawn checkpoint. Ooh, that very well could be. It's like the most it's like the most physically repulsive version of a little big planet waypoint. <laughs> you know what? Does he 3D think print about his it like that, but you're probably right. So there's a question in chat from Heck Boy, Heck Boy. Um uh does he 3D print his stuff? Some of it, yes, but actually he hand fabricates a lot of it. Um He's amazing, and he stepped down from his throne on a high and did the miniature version of the Paraclete, the car in the danger element for our movie, <laughs> The Danger Element. Um, let's see. Locked gate. A Xenotech gate secured with a locking mechanism. Well, at least aliens believe in oh, keys. No. Well, Eli's going to start calling the database and his work the data bank. We yes, and every time you log in, you should say, I've hacked into the databank. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I've hacked into the FBI databank. Do that every time. Ooh, cool. I get to fight creatures from uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Oh, I look delicious. Oh. This is, like, this is like... This is like Monster Hunter if it were mature. This Ooh. is like... Monster Hunter if Monster Hunter knew how to take graphics to the next level. Right? Oof! Stung a little, but I'm okay. I'm gonna pick up that Obelite, y'all. Undiscovered item. Okay, scanny, scanny, scanny. I found a floppy disk, everyone. Nice. New databank entry, Obelite. And the scout log, Astra Mark 12 data drive. Retrieve! I take databanks... Oh, one no. <laughs> data banks one next week <laughs> yes guys yes please always do that and make sure that your instructor corrects you five times before you stop <laughs> uh, make it a daily occurrence if you can slip it into a conversation five bonus points right. speaking of bonus points you should set up uh once, once we get you to uh, affiliate or better, you should set up some pretty cool channel points. You know, I really should do that. You know, when I was an instructor at Newmont, I didn't want to take on affiliate status or anything like that at all because I didn't want to monetize my channel. I wanted to make sure that students had absolute free access, not worry about ads, all that stuff. Um, well, see, even after you're an affiliate, ads, running ads is still your choice. That, oh, that's good to know. Um, the the truth is now that i'm no longer an instructor i actually would not mind going affiliate and making it worth everyone's while it but i also don't want to do that until i can guarantee that i can give you consistent quality content that matters you know oh shut up ah your mom i mean oh, good point good <laughs> he wasn't point talking to you. Netflix is angry in the background <laughs> his what timing was impeccable yeah Sacrilege! Going through the Stargate. But do Hey, I can air dodge. Heck yeah, I can. Run, run, run. Davina Bowie. Alright, here we go. Here's that door. Insert the key. Boosh, mother trucker. Alright, here we go. What's going on in chat? Go ahead, read it off to me. Well we uh yeah. Riles, let me know what's going on. Uh Let's see. So Ash is talking about affiliate a bit. Um, so Ash and uh, Echo previously, uh, Brandon. Uh, Echo! 
uh, Ash and Echo now stream pretty consistently on our SMP Minecraft server. Uh -huh. And I think they're both affiliate at this point. At, and so Ash is talking about how ads play at the beginning almost every time. You can't really stop those. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. play randomly sometimes, so you don't have 100% control, but... So, uh, a trick with Twitch that you can do is, if you watch in theater mode, it'll still show the stream, like right on top of the chat, even if you're stuck in an ad. Oh, I did not know that. That is great. By the way, so far this has just been rather exploratory, which is fine. I like exploratory. Um, I like that they let you kind of discover, you know, feel your oats and, and kind of discover what's out there. Oh, and Echo has now uh, shown up. Echo! Speak of the devil, and he shall appear. <laughs> uh, Eli uh. also mentioned that it depends on the contract. Some of the newer ones require a certain number of ads per hour. Yeah. But and especially well, in the pandemic with, with streaming becoming uh, a, a mainstream form of entertainment, yeah, I can totally understand why they would do that. COVID started, the number of streamers as well as the frequency of streams being watched has increased. Interesting fact, I looked into it here recently, but Twitch views has actually gone up over COVID while YouTube has gone down a bit. Which is so very interesting. I still consume a ton of YouTube content, but almost daily I'm on Twitch for at least one channel. Extra points to you if you can guess what channel that is. Uh, if you're referring to Twitch, I have an idea, but I can't remember the channel name. Well, then you don't have an idea. <laughs> no, I have an idea because uh, it's uh, movie time. <gasps> yes, yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are absolutely correct. I think I know I exactly just never what you're remember referring to. Names, but, That's yeah. okay. Oof, I thought that was something to pick up. Apparently, it was something not to touch. And there's an it adrenaline system. Did you guys see that? Like, adrenaline, like it was Yeah, all... Rift Tracks. Thanks, Ash. Good call out. Good call, good call. Heck yeah. I watch that channel at some point every day. Almost every day, anyway. Uh, and Christian, I'd like you to refrain from bringing up D&D &D at the stream. Thank you. Especially since you can't be bothered to show up. <laughs> I got a, 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 malignant, a, a malignant key. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll take that if you'll just let me. Yes, pick yeah, it up. But that's, uh, but that's how you open up them lasers. Between you. Lose obelites when suffering damage. Warning malfunctions detected. Interesting. Is that what these things? Do? Is that what those purple things do? Do they cause malfunctions? Ooh. <laughs> um, collect Maybe. resin. Apparent. Oh no, I think they're just. I think they're doing a story thing. Like you have to collect materials to upgrade your suit and your abilities. I will say they did a great job of making her way fast when she runs, so that you don't feel bogged down by the size of the map. How about you guys? What do you guys think so far? I know you can only see so much on the stream and everything, but um, tell me about like the video quality. Tell me about the graphics. Tell me what you think so far. How's the sound design? You guys tell me what you think. I'm really curious. There is something. Uh, nope. to my... <laughs> Christian and Echo are too busy talking about why neither of them can show up to my D&D. <laughs> All right. You were making a, a good, you know what? You made a good point about the laser gates and getting past those. However, I did not see a keyhole. Maybe there's an interactable on the side. Maybe somewhere. there is. I'm looking, I'm looking. Part of me wants to just eat that red gate until I die just to see what the rebirth system looks like. But it's too soon. It's too soon. And also, I don't see a keyhole anywhere. So we'll have to come back to that one. It probably is the way to drop that gate, but not in this place. I wonder if it's like uh, in some of the old Star Wars games where you have to go around the back. Because there was that yeah. second way back there. And well, maybe it just unlocks from the other side. Yeah, I think I think thing. we get to the other side from another vector. Yeah. So we'll come back to that later. We'll come back to that later. What's the feedback in the chat so far? Uh, let's see. A whole lot more of... Echo and Christian arguing about D&D. &D. That sounds right. Uh, Tiz says uh, they never heard of the game, but now they want to buy it and a PS5. Uh, pro tip, you should have wanted to buy the PS5 in the first place, but ain't going to be mad about it. Look, she has a, an adrenaline of 2.3. I'm really curious what the adrenaline system is. Also, I really like this giant orb. 
I wonder if the adrenaline system, Ooh, that looks like based cool. off the combat situation, maybe it makes uh, <sighs> either things easier or more sloppy. I wonder. I wonder. Uh, what the beautiful modern dancers in love is this? <laughs> hey, go get out of here. Let's stop piglin trading. You don't need to worry about it. Also, Echo and Christian uh, have both officially either have been or have started drinking. Uh, Tiz has said that this pushed them over the edge, so I'm assuming they're referring to the barrier of buying the PS5. Probably. This deformation here. Uh, Ash, I would love you to weigh in on this one, too. I mean, look at the fluid dynamics on this thing. Holy gorgeous. If it didn't remind me of Jabba the Hutt's gallbladder, it would be beautiful. You say that like Jabba the Hutt's gallbladder can't be beautiful. That's the <sighs> hardest working gallbladder in the galaxy. <laughs> By the way, ominous right here. You'll know what I mean in just a second when the stream catches up. It's a nice little beady eyed demon-esque statue. Yep. I see it's a boss fight. I want a boss fight. Oh, wait, but no. We haven't gotten the high suspense music and the multiple healing items, so <laughs> give, it a no give it a little bit. Give Check a little out bit. these thorny vines, though. The the detail, the texture, look at this lighting. Remember, PS5, along with Xbox One X, is, um, or Xbox Series X, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, new data bank, Eternal Void. The shading and reflectivity of the pseudo wet surfaces is done really well. Oh, it's amazing. The rage it, Especially ray where, is like, fantastic. The refracted light catches the water in the shadows. I just saw something in the options menu that was like, oh, that's going to be beautiful in here in a second. Um, let's go to effects, simplified UI, motion blur, bloom and brightness, customize the HUD, colorblind mode, uh, gameplay, aim assist. Um, I wasn't sure if there was any way to turn on or off ray tracing or anything like that. I think they're just like, no, this is an awesome game. You get to have all the awesomeness. You don't have to turn it on or off. Uh, cool. I think that's probably uh, look at this, uh, likely. Look at this options menu. It has restart cycle. Not restart from checkpoint. Restart cycle. I love yeah. world bu building and storytelling in every element of the game. And right there Screaming. is vernacular we and terminology. We have been raided by Zebras with three. Oh, <gasps> yeah! Welcome, welcome. Right on. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. This is like the weirdest version of uh, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. This is just... Or maybe it's YMCA. Mm, that's what it is. It's xenomorphic YMCA. All right, moving on. Just, you know, spelled in their language because... Oh, there is something down there, isn't there? And, you know, for some reason, YMCA is four letters in that language. Oh, 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 yes! Get on it! <laughs> oh, my balls! <laughs> ah! yeah, adrenaline reset. Okay, so when I took a hit, my adrenaline reset. Interesting. So I wonder if balls, adrenaline acts like a shield, maybe? Um, or like, it's like a, like a hit combo. You know, increases damage and all that. I wonder if it's maybe a bit of both. When you first got Oof. hit... Oh, mother trucker. I almost had him, hit too. second hit, did you see more uh, damage taken between the two? I didn't... I didn't acknowledge it. I didn't... I didn't check for it. Because I'm almost wondering if it acts as, like, a physical booster, so maybe it ups your damage and absorbs incoming damage to the amount of the adrenaline you have and then starts going to true health damage i wonder i wonder i could definitely see that being the case and by the way that recycle that was really well done yeah. uh zebra says mayhaps the statues immortalizing the species most legendary the way <laughs> What am I like? Yeah, okay, triangle. Oh, 
Oh, I love this storytelling so much. Right now I can look at the controls, but I can't. Oh, I can zoom in. <laughs> uh, null, null text? <laughs> Interesting. Nice. I hit square, by the way, and it's all null text. Uh, I'm, I, ooh, uh, oh. she has a dashboard guy. That's awesome. All right, let me out, ship. Offline. Awesome. This was something we did not get to do the first time the ship crashed. They just put us outside the ship to start. Data from last hour. Hostiles eliminated. Malfunctions won. Opalites collected. Interesting, interesting. And then... I wonder if ooh, maybe oh. the progression system comes from dying. You go to a point where you can't do something, which is when you get to come back and do significant upgrades. And the E is pronounced like A. Zebras. Uh, man, at this point, if someone pronounces something that vague, it sounds like it could be Zebras. the pronunciation of my name. <laughs> Probably respond to it. Zebras. That is, in fact, bad. I've heard every pronunciation imaginable at this point. Hey, same, but with my last name. Sure Don't. thing, Exabruz. All right, so... Eh, Azel, I'm going to be honest with you. Eventually, you just become numb to it. Oh, look, instead of actually, like, fixing the problem, we can just hide in our bunk and go to sleep. Oh, well, that'd be convenient, wouldn't it? Hey, that looks like a nice knife. Just let it become someone else's problem. Oh my gosh, the quality of the... I, I know it's silly, but the quality of the book models is really high. <laughs> yeah. The, the abdication of Zeus. Okay, I'm going to hit triangle bottom, on me bed. Principles of air hero, astrodynamics, and crack, and something. Yeah. We'll look at it in a second. I'm, I'm laying down on the bed. I'm not even taking my helmet off, apparently. Well, you are on a foreign planet. It could be. Uh, oh, she's. Could be fatal. She's having a. She's a side vision. sleeper. Yeah. Nope. She had the shortest dream ever. I know, right? That was beautiful, though. That was like a very Twin Peaks David Lynch moment. It was. I want more of that. Oh, you're sleeping with your shoes on. Come on now. I know, right? Gosh, Don't freaking heathen. Don't take your shoes in the bed. All right. Well, now I get to look outside. Dink. Oh, I get to climb through. Oh, nice. Sparky, sparky. Now, from what I understand in this game... Oh, she has her sidearm again. That was not there the first time. The cycle. Every time you die, you are returned to the crash site with, without new weapons, resources, and items collected in the last cycle. Your data bank entries and, and permanent items survive from cycle to cycle. Use these permanent items to explore new areas and utilize shortcuts. So I can, and, oh, I can actually go back into the ship if I needed to. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, da, 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 da. So wait, so does that mean that the ship is essentially your permanent checkpoint until, yeah. I don't know, a base or something is established? Yeah. And then right here. So that would probably be fast travel, right? It must be. Um, by the way, this, this obelisk is indeed that mark on the map. Okay, is there anything else? Do I have to like go in and collect freaking everything again? Well, there wasn't anything to collect over here the first time. From what I understand from the trailers of the game, you're, it's supposed to like dynamically regenerate every time you die. So every level is supposed to be a little different than the last time you were there. Warning, Helios abandoned. Give me your adrenaline. Or whatever that You know, is. something I've noticed, the uh, the way the weapon fires and the ADS time and everything like that, the general principle of the PvE in this game is very similar to uh, Division and Division 2. Yeah. Now, um, as I hit a level of adrenaline, it did tell me that, like, I, I think it indicated that my weapon... Oh. I can't go into water yet, everyone. There, there's stuff in the water to pick up. Instant death. Uh, it was instant hurt, and I lost my adrenaline. But at the time that I picked up my adrenaline, it talked about like a weapon boost, a temporary weapon boost. So I think the adrenaline is uh, combat boosts or, you know... Oh my oh gosh. Boy. This Chat is really new. Gone. Uh, 
da 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 Some name talk. Some interesting pronunciations for uh zebras. Yep. Oh dang, that's all we have for today. Uh I see something up top. I was talking about how incredible the graphics are for this game. I'm figuring that if it's meant to show off the power of the PS5, it had damn well better look gorgeous. Right. I feel at this point that's sort of like that's their that's their cross to bear, right? That's their burden. Is that you we you know we had Miles Morales, but let's be honest, the Miles Morales game was more about getting a really cool, fun title onto the PS5 for launch, and was not truly about illustrating the full power and potential of the system. Although it did uh, benefit from it. However, that being said, that being said, having played the PS4 version and having seen the PS5 version, I do have to say the graphics change oh. between yeah. uh, Miles Morales on the 4 and the 5 is phenomenally different and I in a absolutely great agree. way. I absolutely agree. Um, I picked up some weapon upgrade, but I don't yet understand how to use it. Um, scout logs. I wonder if that's something you have to do with the ship. Quite possibly. Didn't Miles Morales lose... Uh, waiting screens. Yes, I will say the PS5 version yeah. of Miles Morales. Yes, and the yeah the loading time on Miles Morales is. Uh, I will say wonderful. Miles Morales on the PS4 also managed to minimize loading screens a lot. Uh, when compared to uh, Spider-Man and then Spider-Man Miles Morales, the loading time on the PS4 did decrease. Yeah, that's true. Um, contains uh, oh, I need to, I need, Z uh, Xenotech to get that Obelite chunk. Must commit upgrade to harvest bigger resource. Guess so. No woman's sky. I don't like those purple things. They are evil. Ooh, <laughs> it done dropped me some, uh, urea crystals. I mean, Obelite. Damaged oh, nice. fabricator. Insufficient obelites. Well, I had sufficient obelites until I done died because mini boss fight. Yeah, just kill more things. That is how I live. Uh, if there was anything that was an indicator that we truly entered the future age of video games, it would be the end of loading screens. I know, right? And and definitely, I you know, super credit to miles morales for illustrating how possible that is now that said in terms of uh, miles morales ps5 is still visually beautiful i do not want to besmirch or deny that um i i'm simply pointing out that it was not the generational leap in graphical quality that we were hoping for or the, as, as players right but it was still great it was still awesome it was still phenomenal um, well, and and personally, I think a lot of that came from uh, the Spider-Man game was released like a year and a half, two years right before that, and then the PS5 was announced, and so yeah, because because it was announced to come out so quickly, I feel they may have lightly rushed it because they wanted it on the market. They wanted people to have a reason to instantly hop on the PS5 bandwagon. Oh, alt fire magic. I'm all fell it. Uh, I don't think Miles Morales should have been a DLC. I think they did good at, with it being a. Separate they did game. a full scale game on it. They did. Yeah. Um, I think if they took it in the direction of being a DLC, we wouldn't have gotten near as much from it as it it actually has. Yeah, absolutely. I I agree with that statement. Also, interesting fact about Miles Morales, if you uh, if you pay attention at the beginning when Pete pieces out in your little uh, moment together on the roof, uh, if you pay pretty close attention, the Peter Parker in that specific scene, the character model actually looks a lot like, uh, yeah. what's his name? Yeah, he does. And that was on purpose because they changed the character model from the original title to that one. And they were purposely going for like, it definitely seemed like they were going on purpose for a version of uh, Tom Holland. What? No, no. Yeah. Ah. Oh, oh, there were vines. And the vines tried to eat me. They're still eating you. 
Not on my feed. You know what? If you can't be casually grabbed by vines, what can you be grabbed by? Right. But I haven't the figured out. The doors remind uh, Asol of the ones from Slime Rancher. <laughs> well, there you go. Did they announce that they were gonna make him look like Tom Holland? Um, they did not. They did not intentionally. They didn't come out and say that because, of course, you can't use. It's the same problem that Last of Us had with Ellen Page, where it was obvious that was what they were going for, but they didn't have permission to use her likeness, and so they had to make it uh, their version and as unique as possible. Um, uh, what key doors, Hazel? Look at that thing I wanted. Hey. Enhanced vision. It's a nice pickup. What you got there? Oh, from Slime Rancher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh. Modified S. This is. Isn't this the. Uh, isn't that just the same weapon I've got? Tracker Swarm versus Shock Swarm. Okay, so it is slightly different. Tracker Swarm. That's what I have equipped versus Shock Stream. Sorry, I misread that the first time. Um, you I'm know what? This is a, is this is a game of, uh, uh, this is us discovering a new game here. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that. Uh, uh. Uh, if there's a good way to take full advantage of an open world, the freedom to explore vertically as well as horizontally in games like Spider-Man and Crackdown and Just Cause. So I, I would agree with that. Yeah. In, in an open, in an open world, I feel like that is pretty, uh pretty important to be able to explore three-dimensionally instead of just on your singular plane 100 percent agree um i need to go this way i think it which is. uh god of war technically did pretty well too and yeah. inter interacting interacting in a multi-level environment which i felt when came across pretty well i agree i'm going to insert the overlights Star Trek 6, the undiscovered item. Apex Sphere. It's a consumable. Instantly reach Adrenaline Max 5. Oh, nice. Pick you know, that up. I'm just saying. Consumables. That's uh, dangerously close to, like, the Death Star from Star Wars, like, midway through the explosion. If you remove the fire, that's what that is. <laughs> okay. Now the question is, do I have the right Xenotech to get that? Thing, or no, probably not. What? No! Oh, I, I don't know about that, because I feel like GTA does a decent enough job at... Oh, that's a fall into a bit. Yeah, uh, I, I, I feel like GTA does a decent enough job. For the generation where GTA 5 came out, it does well enough for multi-layering movement, because... Yeah, you don't go up and down a lot. It's pretty generic level, but the skies are something you can use well enough. And they made cool vehicles to take part in it. Truth. But um, also, dang, like, get... GTA takes forever to load, so there's that. <laughs> that is also true. Is there no way? Gotta remember how to get where I was. I'm a little turned around, everyone. Oh, here we go. But there's also in this area, just as a heads up, there's also some more areas to explore up top, but I don't think I have access quite yet. Unless I try to go around, and that feels very Yeah, dangerous. GTA 6 has been long awaited for the announcer. Of they pretty much milk GTA 5 dry. Oh, that's I the truth. I would agree with you, Azel. That is the truth. Yeah, this only has one way to go. All right, guys. There's something. I mean, more. that's fair, Zebras. But, like, they solve that by letting multiple vehicles spawn throughout the world. They're not as, you know, great as the vehicles you can buy, but... For the most part, you if you play enough mini games, you can just get it. Plus, if you have Twitch Prime, 
every month they give you access to whatever update they put out as well as like a million free books so there's that uh, let's see i dropped that gun earlier okay i guess at this point at this point there's really only oh no there's there's two ways to go and uh azel to be fair gta 5 is dead the only people that still play it are the people who live by it and the people who do cool roleplay things for recordings oh. and streams guys i found the laser tag rifle nice ominous foggy room opening up the chest of doom for what appears to be some uh, futuristic based assault rifle probably here's your new rifle it's a boy it's a xenotech rifle well, I should hope so. I mean, that's kind of all you've been collecting. It'd be pretty uh, inconvenient if they gave you something that wasn't of the same tech. Right. Let's go here. Important update. A gun. Thanks, Zebras. Tachyomatic carbine. A long-range weapon of sentient make. Of sentient make. Despite the exposed and open design of the weapon, it seems markedly resistant to damage or jamming, despite the high particulate matter present in the atmosphere, indicating the possibility for self-maintaining materials. That's what my AR-15 needs. The weapon has high, <laughs> high rate of fire enabled by the unique combination of its mechanism and the projectiles. It utilizes electromagnetic fields to accelerate small bursting air projectiles to high speeds. Although, where these come from hmm. is unclear I wonder what kind of moment. projectiles they uh, Azel, that's fair, but also, like, Ooh. the races and custom Ooh. game modes, a lot of them are community-made, so it's not, like, GTA-specific thing. It's just, it's like playing Happy Wheels back in the day. Ha <laughs> ha. Also, uh, this weapon that I just picked up came with an alt-fire mode. You know, of course, there's the, there's the rifle. And just so you guys know, the haptic feedback on the controller is such that, like, the, the shoulder buttons... Um, normally, like when the game isn't on, I mean, you can just push the button, there's no resistance. But when a game is playing and it has uh, features and functions for this, there's actually like a physical stop that occurs. And I can squeeze past it to get the alt fire mode. Which, if you can look at this like lobbing arc, uh, I don't know what you think, but I think grenade launcher. Hey, look, there's a bad guy out there. Yeah, that's definitely. Uh... If Division has taught me anything, that is, in fact, a nade launcher. If uh, Rainbow Six has taught me anything, that's a grenade launcher. <gasps> I shot that little dude uh, with two is, bullets. That is, in fact, sexy. Uh, oh, is that what that is? Hmm. Hmm. That was way more than I thought it was going to be. Uh, Azel says, okay, I'm sorry, but they may... Damn! I know, right? <laughs> I know when the stream saw is Saw that up. spread? Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, anyway, uh, Azel says, okay, I'm sorry, uh, but they made haptic feedback such a big mess when, like, no one cared when it came out on the Xbox One literally years before the PS5. Right. Well, and part of that, I think, was hardware limitations as well right like there's only so much that you could do with the hardware that we had at the time not just the physical controller hardware but like the processing hardware and and that's that's saying something because the ps4 and the xbox one were powerful powerful machines no thanks oh i did not mean to squeeze the aim that hard i'm used to oh, wow they ricochet huh good to know uh zebras uh, on my oh damn after seeing your nice little launching feature right uh, responded with sweet sarsaparilla right oh hey it's back again and I'm at adrenaline 3 enhanced melee attack I have melee attack you can melee attack I didn't know that the game oh. was awfully unclear about I the ability I hit R3 to and it gave me Lara Croft vision that would probably be your enhanced vision from adrenaline 2 that is the hopes. Interesting. Scan. And... <laughs> Less about haptic cool. feedback and more about adaptive triggers, says Tiz. Oh, do I want repairs a minor amount of integrity, or do I want Adrenaline 5? Yeah, I want Adrenaline 5. Uh, I want Adrenaline 5. You know, I feel like Adrenaline would be useful, but I do also don't know what integrity does for you at this point. Now check this out. 
horizontal barrage or shock stream no 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 no. i'm keeping my barrage bro i tried shock stream a little bit ago i was not happy i was not as pleased proficiency wait this no. game was described to you as a horror based bullet hell zebras um you know what based on the trailers i could definitely see why that would be the case like why they would think that right now it's very lightweight because we're in the very beginning of the game right um but i i understand where that point of view comes from especially from other trailers that i have you know caught pieces of or what have you um uh, interesting fact i never got to catch any of the trailers for this game so this is all considered first look it's phenomenal right uh, I mean, Tiz has compared it to Doom. Interesting. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, this already has, like, little ricochet shots that go with it as well. Awesome, awesome. Wait a second, there's a door over here. Yeah, uh, both guns have, like, 40% chance ricochet. It was just different style shot. So, like, the last one was tracker shots, and this one is the, the street. And I am really curious, like, what Xenotech does it take to get these obelite chunks? Because they, those chunks are everywhere. I, I wonder really if it's, them. uh, I wonder if it's kind of like, uh, God of War. It's just stuff you have to come back for to re-engage. Yeah, I think that's, but see, that's weird because when you die, the map changes. But what that means is that, like, I either have to survive long enough to become the villain or... I need to, um, like you say, like, maybe, because, oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Ouch. Adrenaline reset, too. Oh, I did not mean to be down here. Help. That was accidental. I done fell. Oh, no. I'm okay now. Wait, what the searchlight? There's an eye. Guys, there's straight up an eye. What the Illuminati yeah. nonsense is this? Don't look at me. It's rude. Just shoot it. In the eye. I did. I did. I did. Well, okay. I didn't. But I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tiz correct, uh, corrects me. Uh, they were just saying uh, a a F P N F P S uh, horror bullet hell. Like Doom. That makes sense. Uh, what do we have here? Ah, uh, yes, Zebras. <laughs> Color me pleb. Myself. But when I see a place where one bullet should be, and that place is occupied by 90 bullets, that smells like a bullet hell to me. Is there... So my R3 hey, click listen. still works. Listen, uh, Zebras, I wonder if it's just uh, once you get there, you unlock it. And so upgrading your adrenaline is just so that you keep unlocking new abilities. Now this feels like checkpoint, like you can save the cycle. Yeah. Collect obelites. Hostiles leave behind acid Sir, pools upon death. Nanotech device, it oh. requires something to activate. I wonder if that's more like... Uh, How do you fix a malfunction? I think that uh, area where you had to insert device, I wonder if that's more like uh, in like a RPG, a hidden treasure room. That you have to like find the key for and come back later. I wonder that too. Look, it's a big glowy orb. I'm gonna step into the snow globe. Interact. I want to. I'm sure nothing could possibly Inert device, go wrong. A Xenotech device. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna hold this up to the microphone. Listen to this. This is what my controller sounds like right now. And that's through the vibration that is, function. That is. Yeah, that's not ominous at all. That's amazing. And it goes back to standard vibration and then turns off when you leave the snow globe. That was beautiful. I I was unaware that the controller could make noises via the vibration motors like that. That was impressively well done. That, that is pretty phenomenal. So what's my, uh, what's my melee? Tis, I'm going to need you to elaborate. Oh, dang it. All you've done is throw Mordor into the chat, and I'm not entirely sure what that's referring to. Well, there was the giant one, eye does earlier. Not simply. <laughs> right, but like, I don't know. That's not like Sauron-esque. It was, it was quite lacking in flames of the Udun. Okay, now, how do I switch back to my pistol, or do I? I'm just kind of curious if Troll. that's an option. Oh, wait. <laughs> nah, 
I was nope. about to say scroll wheel, but we're not on the ah. mouse and keyboard. Might no, be triangle. I tried it. Hmm. Touchpad maybe? If it doesn't open the menu. I'm doing like swipe gestures too just to be sure. I didn't get any reaction. Yeah. I got adrenaline! What does it say? Enhanced overload? I wonder yeah. if you... I wonder if you only get like one active weapon Oof. at a time. That's just something you have to change your equip on in your inventory. Yeah, I wonder. I'll take that. Thank you very much. I'm currently... Oh, because the freaking acid pool. Gosh dang it. <laughs> the eye tower. Still an eye tower. I know an eye tower when I see one. <laughs> Thanks, Tiz. <laughs> yeah? Oh, hey. Uh, I was not wrong about shooting that wall. Even I'm surprised. You know, I I personally have lived by the strategy in any game that gives me a gun. Fix it with if bullets. If you can shoot it, you should shoot it. That's right. That's right. All right. So let's see. Ooh, malignant resin. What the what? Now I've got a couple. Unless of... you have a flamethrower, in which case burn it to the ground. <laughs> oh, I found one of the mother boxes. Sweet. If you collect, if you collect fifty mother boxes, you may recreate the mothership. <laughs> Insert random RPG collect all items to achieve. I know, your right? Item here. We need your help in the village. Collect one hundred flowers. So, like something any child could. Sure, sure. I'll get right on that. Thanks. Thanks I, a lot. I've Thank literally you. saved the world three times, and you need me to collect flowers. I know, right? Uh, oh, that's on the next If you part. see a okay. suspected eye tower in your neighborhood, please be sure to alert the authorities. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Telltale signs of an eye tower. There's a tower, usually with an eye on it. You know what? Hang in tight. I'm going to check our data bank. Mm, excuse me, hiccups. Um, resources Silphium, resin, malignant resin, obelite. And then Atropian Key, mm. Malignant Key, Calibrator, a Xenotype technology that has the capacity to imprint data directly into the user's nervous system. Oh! These imprints seem largely for the use of weapons and unknown reference, implying a need to instantly train many units simultaneously. Yeah, and then there's the data cube. The Tesseract uh, is a metallic framework containing encoded data for an item. The encryption is sophisticated and even with, if it was within means to decrypt, the items made by sentient civilization use unknown beyond our current capacity the sentence you know something sentence. i just want to throw out there about the data cube it starts off with a very like dictionary.com definition you know a cube shaped metallic framework i know like, right what? it's a cube it's, it's in the shape of a cube where it is cubish uh open uh, reduced max integrity open containers oh we have to get the open containers okay cool so those are those are the uh, zebras's response to the uh, rpg discussion the best way the best is when the only way to prove that you are the hero destined to save the world is to collect the 100 flowers <laughs> Ooh, the floor fell out well the floor is in fact lava uh, it used to be anyway dude okay so her suit is dirty and mangled like really cool uh, residual effects. I'm muddy. I'm dirty. I'm busted up. And I was clean when I started. Ooh. You she... know, I'm just yeah, saying. Let's go these, put that uh, on. These alien creatures are very similar to some of the things that you would see in like Warframe. I know, right? Eyes up, Tenno. Yeah, sure. Just plug that in. You know, USB and aliens and stuff. Yeah, just slap that on your back. I'm sure that's safe. Hot cyber demon st uh, strats for that search for that. Uh, let's see. So I do Important have things to know about this strange cube-shaped artifact full of uh, portentous m uh, mysteries. Item one A. It is cube-shaped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tiz, I agree. The only problem is, is like I download Warframe, I play it for like two days, and then I stop. 
playing it. Proximity Translocator. So now that I have, now that I have like Alien Spine, I can interact with Snow Globe. Oh, and it's at, oh, so that's the fast travel system. That is the fast it's travel system. It's not the Walgina. It is not the Walgina. Confirmed. Point to point teleportation. Your suit can now use oh, translocators now to teleport. That was beautiful. That's really cool, but that's actually not necessarily the teleportation waypoint system we were thinking of. No. Although it does get you to the next part of the level, though. It gets you to otherwise inaccessible places. Well, I mean, that one technically took you back. Yes, but there was also one before. Yeah, back in the direction you came from. Mm -hmm. I wonder if uh, that uh, add-on also allows you to interact with the uh, ground vault thing. I wonder that too. Do 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 do. Here I am. Ready? Skadoosh. And I hate being turned into light. All right, there we go. You know, I can't oh, imagine that that's not a painful process. I know, right? Like every time it's just agony. Well, because, like, it completely breaks down your atoms, you know, and turns you into metaphysical light, and then says, here, let's reassemble you. You guys know the Star Trek transporter theory, right? The horrifying tra transporter theory? Uh, Xenotech required, so it's not the tech I have. I will Lord. definitely take that. Thank you very much. Maybe they'll give you a new spine later. Yeah, you know, I need that in real life, if they're willing. I, I, I'd be down. Um, let's see. Reduced max integrity? Why? Stop malfunctioning. I had really good health, and now it's gone. Uh, Wait a minute. Is that Warning malfunctions was? detected. You have to open containers? Yeah. Yeah, that's where you came from. That's right. Uh, but near something. that spot, there was the little ground vault. Little ground. Right. Well, let's, uh, little thing on the here. ground. That required tech to open. Oh, oh, oh. I think you are. I correct. can't imagine that since the other thing still requires a different tech, that one would also be unlocked, but it's worth the look. It is, except. No, that's a different area. This is a different area. Yeah. Yeah, they've taken me somewhere else. Interesting. Locate the White Shadow broadcast. You know, that sounds like a really good time. And a really creative name Ooh. for your podcast. Obelite repository. Device that exchanges ether and obelites for one another. It seems poised to do something if enough obelites are placed in, all, in it. Cooperation with other scouts is encouraged. Go online. Is there online multiplayer in this thing? There's a that fabricator. That might be how you get the multiplayer. Yeah, I didn't... I'll be honest with you. I didn't realize multiplayer was a thing for this game. I knew there was an online element, but I thought it was something else. Like maybe events or something to that effect. Integrity augment increases maximum integrity by 30%. That would be great. Um, uh, I would like to know oh how to boy, fix... Oh, boy, popping off in the chat. Uh, oh, I would like to make a Zabris. statement about Warframe and its various qualities as a game and or numbers increasing simulator. But I think neither I nor my 10,000 hours... Oh, man, 10,000 hours in Warframe? I know, right? Yeah, your, your opinion might be a little biased, but... Uh, on the topic of being transformed into light and flung across the landscape, I'm not sure if you have any uh, familiarity with the Dishwasher series of games. Oh. But they make a not. point of explicitly describing in-universe that every time one of the characters uses their teleportation ability, it is a harrowing nightmare experience. <laughs> Phenomenal. Find and collect Xenoglyph ciphers to translate them. That's another, like, very Lara Croftian thing. Huh, there's this thing I don't know. That's also know. very God of War thing. Yeah. Collect language fragments to read this tablet. Right. Or collect language fragments to be able to open this door. Like, why do I need to speak the language to open the door? I'm the God of War. I'll break Look. it down. Look at this thing. For long distance traveling destiny. Oh, oh, here's fast travel. Here's fast there travel. That's where it is. Translocate. Yeah, that's basically like the other one that was on the ground. Uh, Alien way writing. Back where. There we go. I found a xenoglyph. Discovered a fragment of the xenoglyph. You have indeed found a glyph of the xeno. I have. Now can I do this? Tier one. Our severed brethren, agitated waters, maddening agony. Stop the endless cycle of Cyrillic in Sanskrit. All right, cool. Translation accuracy, twenty-three percent. That is awesome. That is awesome. 
That makes me very happy. Uh, um, that reminds Triz of the Predator writing. A little bit. Some of it. I can see it, yeah. Lava wall, huh? I love lava walls. Yeah, well... Although that's more of like a force field. Yeah. With a ripple effect. I agree. This game is enormous. The Xenoglyph. Ooh, them zombie. Oh, oh, ants, 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 die! I got hit though. I want to do this though. Go. Ah! Mm, no! Stop it! No! And this seems uh, uh unfair. You asked me. I agree. This seems vaguely like uh, the Fangorn reinforcements. Uh, oh. Siege in Lord of the Rings. You know. Dang. The orcs are overrunning us. Enter giant tree boy. <laughs> well, so the cycle has begun again. Oh, but now I'm not in the ship. I good night, Christian. Don't be late. Oh, I don't have. The, Wake up on time. Don't have the rifle anymore. Locate the white shadow broadcast. Oh, uh, let's go back inside the ship. I'm alone. Kind of curious if there's uh, anything I can do in here of interest. Um, by the way, folks at home, I am planning to make this like the end of the stream at this point and just kind of give like my first impressions and things of that nature. Um, I just want to see if there's anything at this point that hostiles eliminated 37, three malfunctions, oblates collected a total of 488, unidentified item in cargo, in cargo bay. Please remove. <laughs> Alert Helios, this is an order. Get away from here as soon as. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. And also, check out the data bank matrix on the right. That is a super cool way of tracking what data you have and how it relates to each other. And also, again, great storytelling in just environmental elements and uh, without, you know, without beating the player over the head with the story. Very, very cool. I like it a ton. Oh, we have ship's logs that I haven't looked at. Nice. Do you see the white shadow? Oh, these are things I've picked up along the way, too. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So, back on the uh, overview, the databank, uh -huh. I think that pattern changed from the from the previous uh, cycle. Yeah, I think every time I pick up a piece of information, a half square fills in. Yeah. And, and so, as I've been encountering enemies, it's filled in more information in the databank. As I pick up drives and transmissions they're all filling in but but i love how it's not it's not absolutely linear which is amazing and correct for this game um well it's it's also fits like we crash landed so obviously you're not going to find all the data in the order that it was originally stored right you know? hey what happens if uh if i sleep on the bed does it save is that what's happening i don't know i wonder i wonder that's very monster hunter if they do um, but then, like, what's my dream going to look like? Is it going to be trees again? I almost suspect Ooh. that it's more of an autosave, because I can't imagine, or, like, this... Yeah, I would have to assume it's an autosave, because it'd be pretty inconvenient if you had to go back to sleep yeah. every time. I, it makes me wonder what is... Be I think that there's, um... I think there's very subtle, like, hint-giving and storytelling by laying down in the bed. Um... I wonder if her, oh, it's like orange sparks out of nowhere. Um, I wonder if the bed tells her kind of like what the world outside is like. So, uh, you know, or how this map is going to be assembled or what the focus is going to be or what to look out for. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. I am going to go ahead and call it here. Yeah, there's tutorials. <laughs> See, Chris. I'm just trying to figure out how it can be at all comfortable to sleep with the helmet on. Well, I'm going to be honest. When you're on a planet that you're not entirely sure is safe to breathe on and there's a giant hole in your ship, I don't think you're <laughs> concerned about comfort when you lay down for that nap. Malfunctions. Your suit can malfunction when coming in contact with malignant entities such as containers, consumables, or even certain enemy projectiles. They have a chance to create a malfunction triggering negative effects that can only be removed by performing the task indicated. Oh, okay. So I don't have to, like, manually feed it the obelites. Just the action of collecting obelites gets tracked. It's like a, it's like a soft goal, and once you reach that goal, 
you satisfy the malfunction and it's fixed. Well, um, the goal isn't necessarily collect obelites because uh, you had that malfunction up on the platform back there. Yeah. And it was to uh, collect some chest or something. Yeah. And uh, as opening containers, right? Um, yeah. And apparently you can open data cubes at a data cube processor, which I didn't find. Um, or at least I didn't recognize when I saw it. But also, um, that last line, gaining a third malfunction triggers critical malfunction, which will destroy a random carried item. Oh, that's insane. Overload. Weapons on Atropos do not require ammunition, but they can overheat if fired continuously. Uh, your I'm sure there are specific things that can't be destroyed by a malfunction, though. Yes, inside like, the I'm sure zone. it limits it to things that you can actually afford to lose. Mm-hmm. Okay, I didn't know about weapon overloads, but this is a really cool thing. It's it's very uh, it reminds me of Dead by Daylight. If your weapon overloads, you can like help it out by pulling the trigger when the indicator is within a certain part of the meter. Yeah, just a little skill check. Yeah. Then there's go online. Um, interesting. There's no like end game. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, in that case. Um, I think this is just where we. I think it's just where we pull the plug. Uh, guys, holy smokes! Wow. This game. Okay, so this is awesome. I don't have any complaints about the game so far. Uh, the graphics are excellent. The sound design is on par. Uh, the story is extremely compelling. It's definitely my flavor of story. And just, you just know, something to pitch in here real quick. Uh -huh. um, that uh, uh, concept art in the background on your home screen for hovering over the game that's some pretty phenomenal art it really is and it again the, so far the art direction in this game has been exceptional at environmental storytelling uh even here like by the way that that background art is the art that's on the cover and, of the game and it if you understand the nature of the game this tells a huge story Right. If you don't understand the nature of the game and you look at it very carefully, you start to piece together what what the background trying to, is trying to tell you. Um, this is I'm very happy with the storytelling in this game. You know, for a while there, it was this it was this trendy thing to say that single player uh, narratives were just on the way out. You know, with with the advent of PUBG and then of course a little game called Fork Knife. Um, they uh, the idea that a single player narrative still had relevance in the in the game industry for a while there there was this there was this um sort of echo in the ether that single player narratives just weren't important anymore which by the way was a completely manufactured lie uh it's it's interesting what social media can propagate when it wants to and the truth is single player narratives never really died it's just that the zeitgeist jumped at the opportunity to have something uh, in the form of like PUBG and Fortnite and 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 now Warzone and Apex and a million other PVP games where the games have really interesting contexts but those games are not about story those games are about player versus player challenge right they're about they're about being the better player compared to other people in the world it is it is um it is by my perception and antisocial experience in many cases because you're purposely getting into a group with other people to uh oppose the other people right of course you've got your squad you've got your clan you've got you know you've got your people on your team that are going to help you with that but you're not there to to make friends per se you're not there to have a positive social experience you are there to dominate which is fine that's i'm not saying that's a, that i'm not saying that that's not a, a valid way to play games you can but because it was so popular and so hot and it came in so strong uh, there became this misconception that single player narratives weren't important, that online PVP was the only form of, of or the only, mm, not only form, but the more important form of online social interaction. And I completely, uh, uh, Zebras, yeah, go ahead. I, I would have to disagree with you a little bit. It's not that the popularity goes back and forth. It's more like the communities in their separate masses just talk about something more or less like i would i would say that there's more publicity to either side in the sense that some years there's some really phenomenal like single player or co-op pve games that come out and so you hear more about the single player games 
whereas the following year a new multiplayer game comes out and it's all the talk for the next year and a half so i, I wouldn't yeah. say the popularity comes and goes in waves i think it's more of the distribution of new titles that brings about the conversation for either style and you know what i, I want to split hairs on this one I, I definitely hear what you're saying riles and i agree with the sentiment i'm going to split hairs on this one term uh in terms of terminology um i'm going to go with uh relevance or importance versus popularity because popularity the term pop the, the term popular just means voice of the people right like it's it's what the people are talking about and so it would be fair to say that certain multiplayer games like fortnite and the such um were highly popular that's what everybody was talking about but in terms of importance to the industry it wasn't the only thing that was important and it wasn't the only thing that carried weight and that mattered um I, I didn't do it on the stream because I wanted to have it for a personal experience first, but I played through all of The Last of Us 2, and it was a cathartic, emotional, challenging, uh, real experience. It's I, I've, I've had this conversation recently where I identify the fact that, like, you know, when we talk about movies, when we talk about cinema, there are different terms for a movie based on its impact. You have a flick, which is like you know, Fast and Furious 8, or, you know, just what, what some people call a popcorn movie. It's just for fun, right? Uh, and then you have a movie which has a bit more gravitas, a bit more impact. It doesn't have to be a serious film, but it, it is a film that is, you know, for lack of a better term, popular. And then you have a film. And a film has meaning and depth, and it changes things. You've changed things, right? It's It changes things. Uh, and in truth, in video games, there, we don't have that multi-terminology. We have genres, we have types of games, but we don't have words that indicate the impact of a game. And I think that we are less for it. I think that we need some new terminology. The way that I talk about Last of Us 2, it's not a game, it's an experience. Uh, it's, it's something that is beyond playing. You're not playing, you're participating, you're driving, you're experiencing, right? It's beyond a game. Whereas Rocket and League, which is currently on my on my home bar there, <laughs> is a game. I see that, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, something to add on to that. I feel like single player Thank you, games as a whole, especially if they don't include like co-op PvE or co-op in general, I think most games that are meant to be exclusively single player are meant to take you on some ride along journey some emotional thing to experience yes and i think that returnal i mean in just the hour that we played we, we, we played a little bit over an hour after we got through technical issues and um in the hour that we played uh i can see this i can see this building up to a grand denouement for like a major story revelation and um i I don't know that I will have the, uh, in fact, I can I, I can almost guarantee that I will not have the emotional reaction to this game that I did for Last of Us 2. Uh, for the record and unabashedly, I cried four times in the first three hours of playing that game. I just like, and, and the last time I cried was like racking sobs, just like ugly cry. Uh, Returnal, I don't think is going to hit my emotional strings like that, but I am intrigued. It has my, it has my uh, intellectual interest, right? And I think, well, and but go ahead. Uh, I think a lot of that comes from with Last of Us 2. It was, you know, the return of everything you knew, remembered, and loved from Last of Us 1. It was just this phenomenal kind of wrap up thing. Like, we're going to do this, this, and this to all these characters that you love. Try me. <laughs> and then you did. Yeah. Yeah. And they won. Um, Zabris, uh, you make a great comment, and just for the, for the people at home in the chat, Zabris says, I think video games need to be unequivocally uh, accepted and considered to be art forms before we can get proper delineations for their impact, individual or cultural. I think that we're on the way there, too, because if, if you look at, like, I lived through the 80s. That's when I started video gaming because I was a little kid then, right? I, I, I had an Atari, which I still have behind me, by the way. Um, I had an Atari. 
I had a Commodore 64, and uh, and then eventually I got an 8-bit NES. And so I lived through, and, and I went to the arcade for fun, right? Like I went through that whole arc in the history of video games. Uh, and And in truth, especially at that time, you know, if you went to the arcades a lot, there was a certain stigma there. You, you, if you played video games, it was a waste of your life because you should be learning some trade and things like that. Here we are some four decades later, and there are still these remaining stigma that just hang on because and, and I think part of it is um, we, uh, video games were given the right name, but that name still carries a stigma because of that four letter word game. And we've never really gotten 100% away from that. However, where are we today? We have museums, we have traveling ex uh, exhibitions, we have full on symphonic concerts, all we inspired. Have well, also we have uh, paid professional leagues as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, esports has exploded in terms of uh, international renown, cost, uh, reward, it's, it's it's tens it's 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 millions and millions and millions of dollars every year. Esports has just exploded in like the last ten years. In the last ten years, esports has just erupted, right? Um, and then Tizicopia is making some good comments here too. Uh, and it's yeah. it's a difference of genre and how it's supposed to make you feel. This is meant to make you think and feel like an '80s sci-fi movie, whereas Last of Us. Uh, soul was sold on making you cry, um, and, and, and I, I hear your point, Tizicopia, and, and I don't think you're trying to do. I don't think you're trying to do this, but I want to be very clear. I don't want to cheapen the value of Last of Us Two by saying it's just there to make you cry. And, and again, I, I don't think that's what you're trying to do. But I want to make it clear. Um, Neil Druckmann, who I have immense respect for as a director and as a creative, uh, he talked about how the theme of The Last of Us One was you know that if you could if you could sum up the theme that theme was love and in many interviews uh he would say the last of us 2 the theme of that game is hate but then after the game came out and people actually played through it and they experienced all those things and even though it's been out for like almost a year i'm still not going to give spoilers um he he readdressed that and he's like you know i would say that the second game's theme was hate because it was like a marketing thing to make sure that people understood the the bare essentials but it's not really about that is it it's it, when they were making the game they were like first can we make you utterly hate and despise someone and then by the end of the game can we make you care about that person and it wasn't a manipulation it was a human experience it was about can we touch your soul from this side of the screen. And I gotta be honest with you, for people who approach that game with emotional maturity, it worked. It worked. It. Uh, by the way, in video game news on that wise, and we'll, we'll wrap this up here in just a second, uh, but in, in video game news, uh, The Last of Us 2 just broke a world record. They have received over 300 Game of the Year awards from various sources. Over 300. And they're the first game to do that. So, so uh, big fat kudos just, to them. Just to throw something out there, that was just, you know, you spent plenty of time as a teacher and that just went. You were like, and we'll finish this up in a second. Continues train of thought perfectly. <laughs> Did you do one of those side rifle first days on points don't finish this teaching concept? Uh, no, it's probably just me being on a tangent and because there's no hard time for me to stop, I can just keep going. But. <laughs> You should tell Wells that he's a, that he's like a tertiary voice on the stream. Anyway, um, <laughs> guys, you have been freaking awesome. This is this is my return to streaming. I'm I w I don't have any way to guarantee that I can do this consistently because of, of the time and the and the you know lack of convenience and things like that. But uh, this was like a test run of my new setup. I've got new lighting. Uh, I'm I've got a new laptop. I've got a new capture device. If you have any opportunity to just like shoot me a little bit of feedback, tell me about how the stream went, show, you know, tell me about the visuals, the audio and all those things. I would love to improve upon this. I know that my uh, my display and my overlay is really lackluster tonight because it was punted on the fly. I am going to work on making this far more attractive in the future. Thank you very much for your patience and your time. You guys are awesome. And as always, and Riley help me out with this one, be epic. Don't suck. That's right, everybody. Thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. Have a great night.